Hello, and welcome to Monumental, where we sit down with entrepreneurs, leaders, visionaries, and big thinkers making monumental change. Here's your host, Evan Holliday. Welcome back to Monumental. I'm your host, Evan Holliday, and today on the show, we have a special guest, Justin Spaulding. Justin, so glad to have you on the show. How you doing, man? I'm good, Evan. I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad you uh, asked me to be on here and glad we were able to work it out. And it worked out pretty quickly. Really. You just reached out to me a couple weeks ago, so I'm, I'm excited to be on. Yeah, yeah. Really glad to have you on. So Justin has been killing it. I've been following on Instagram. Uh, so Justin owns and runs numerous businesses. He's the founder and CEO of Spaulding Group, where they've acquired and have over $25 million in multifamily assets under management. Uh, so really, let's just start it off by by going into a little bit of your background and and how you got started on your journey to multifamily. Uh, I mean, so I went to college and I really went to college to play college football. Let's be honest. Uh, if it weren't for football, I probably would have started my own business a lot earlier than I did. Uh, probably would not have gone to school. Uh, so paid to play as Division three guy, and um, you know, football really taught me more about life and uh, you know, what I'm doing now than in leadership and leading people through low times, high times, you know, and pushing people, getting the best out of people. Then, you know, obviously school did. So I learned a lot, lot from playing football. I was a captain there, was an all American and had some professional tryouts, but in 2000, so I graduated high school, 2008, 2009, I was, I was a sophomore and we took a family trip to Chicago and Trump tower was going up. I didn't know, you know, who Donald Trump really was. Then I'd heard the name, but like, I didn't really know who it was. And, I just saw this tower going up. I'm like, man, it'd be cool to be a, a part of that whole process. And so right away on Michigan Ave, went down and got a few books and, um, and just started reading. And from that point forward, like for me, college was go work out. It was go to football practice. And then it was skip classes and read <laughs> that I would get. And I read like 120 books through college and and, um, and everything. And I, I always learned with the mindset of, you know, let's go out and let's go out and implement what I'm learning here. I very, was very, very, very conscious, uh, conscious of, of like, just, I was always thinking about how important it was going to be to implement what I was learning, not just being a forever student and not doing anything with what I was learning. So that's kind of how it all started for me. And I just became like hooked. Uh, basically after that day in Chicago I became hooked and my mind was set was just made that that's what I wanted to do. And it was about five years after that until I was in, Four years, four years, 2013 when I purchased the first property. That's awesome, man. Um, I love how you you saw something in Chicago, the Trump Tower of, of all towers, uh, yeah. the Trump Tower, yeah. and, and that kind of flipped a switch in your mind. Um, I, I had a similar experience in college. That's how I got into real estate was saw this, you know, mixed use 300 unit development going in. I was like, I need yeah. to be a part of that. Like, I don't know yeah. what it is. Yeah. I felt that energy. It was like, I need to be in real estate. I don't know what it is, but I, I yep. get there, man. Yep. And I, I mean, I just, it was, it was something too about like, once I, once I started to read the books on, you know, how you could get them to cash flow and you make money doing it. And like, cause at first to me, it was just like the whole idea and the whole process of like, wow, how cool would it be like to take from, take that from just vacant land to building something. Now I've never, I haven't anything, but, um, and then I found out, Oh, this whole cash flow thing. And I just became obsessed with it. Yeah. That's awesome, man. So, so how did you, how did you decide to, to dive into books? Were you, were you already a big reader before then or? I, no, no, it wasn't, but it's just something that, you know, I think uh, a big thing that's wrong maybe with like the educational system is forcing people or putting people into this box of, you know, just to check off boxes to say, Oh, I learned that. Or, Oh, I learned that. And like, you're learning, you know, capital is of states and stuff. none of that stuff really mattered. I didn't really like get excited to go read about some of the things we were reading about. So I was never like, yeah. you know, the moment I got passionate and excited about something, like I found myself reading all the time about the things that I was excited and passionate about. So, um, so what do you think, was there something in football that helped you really just dive into books and, and, and I mean, 120 books in college, that's, that's more than most people read in like a lifetime. And let alone college, I feel like most of us are out partying and try, just trying to have a good time. 
We did some of that too. We did a little bit of partying. <laughs> uh, yeah, we did. Balance. That's good. Yeah, we did a, did a little bit of party. We had the party house, that's for sure. People would just roll. This is all way off topic, and I've never talked about this on a podcast before. <laughs> and, uh, people would just roll into our house, be like, what's going on? Who's this guy? And like, isn't the party here tonight? I'm like, I guess so. So um, he had like <laughs> cases of beer. And, but uh, I love it. No, I mean, like football from a standpoint, I don't know that football really made an impact. I mean, like reading uh, necessarily, but maybe it did because football kind of gave me this like desire and want for more. Like I always wanted to be the best player that I could be. I always, you know, in high school, I wanted to be all state and college. I wanted to be all American. I wanted to win conference championships and national championships. And so I knew that if like real estate was what I wanted to do, like kind of learning that was that first step and I had to find a way to learn. And so I just became obsessed with reading. Right. But then where football really played the, the biggest role was, you know, from – I played over 100 football games. I played other sports too growing up. But I mean, I played over 100 football games by the time I was, you know, a senior in high school because we started playing contact football here in Wisconsin in first grade. Wow. The whole time I lost maybe like four games, five games. Huh. And my sophomore and junior year of uh, college, my sophomore year we lost five games. And my uh, junior year we lost six games. So I lost 11 games right there. So that was before my senior year. Then we went on and win a conference championship and had a really, really good season, record-breaking season. But so, you know, leading people through that and getting people motivated during the the, the low times really taught me a lot. And, and um, uh, hmm. it, just, it just learned a lot. It just taught me a lot, being a captain and then going through that, going through the low times to then being able to keep everyone believing, keep everyone working hard. Uh, that we could still be successful. And that's what happened my senior year. And the same, a lot of those skills, leadership wise and just work ethic wise, uh, came out on, has come out on the other side. And it's stuff that I implement all the time. I, mean, I work like crazy, obviously. And I put work in and I'm passionate about it. And I know I'm going to get better from that work that I put in. And I know it's about the team. And when, you know, other people, when you give credit to your teammates, like write a lot of credit out when we succeed, um, it's, it's kind of a whole, it, I, I think athletes have, I just wish – I feel like there's a lot of athletes out there that really struggle finding their passion after college. I was able to find mine and, imp, and implement all those things that an athlete has. A lot of athletes lose that. They become less competitive because they don't have that thing that's, like, driving them, um, which is too bad. So that's what athletics really did for me and what college football did for me. It just, I built off of it. It was a springboard. It was not like a – it wasn't a thing where I'm going to be 40 years old and just reflecting, and that's the highlight of my life playing college football. It was a springboard, not the highlight of my life. Yeah. So, and I, I can I can hear you're very passionate about what you're doing and also passionate about bringing other people up and, and being a leader and, you know, being the best that you can be so that you can also help lift others up um, and help them become their best self. For sure. Yep, for sure. So, so um, and, I, and I can very much relate to that because that's, um, you know, I'm always pushing, I'm always pushing every day, every day. And, and I think a lot of our listeners are, are like that too. You know, they're high achievers. Uh, but what what drives you to be a high achiever? Why are you, why are you so driven? Um, I'm just a growth. My mindset is just all about growth. Uh, I always want to get better at what I'm doing and it's not just business. It's, you know, with my health, with, um, you know, with my business, with, you know, relationships, my family. Um, I want to get better and better. I, I just, I feel like when I, when I'm not improving, that's when I'm like most, I'm like, it's like almost a depression type thing, right? Yeah. I don't have to be that I'm actually improving. It's just like the work and the process that goes into it. Cause I know obviously you're going to have years that are setbacks or you're going to have days that are setbacks. Yeah. I mean, as long as I'm like out there actively, I, cause I know I'm going to get better from that. Right. Um, so for me, I don't know. I'm, I'm driven off that. I love that feeling uh, of just being able to grow uh, and move forward in, in all areas of life. That's yeah. what I'm happy or most excited. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, um, I think I, I, I'm very much aligned with what you're saying because that's the same with me is like, if I, if I don't get something done today, um, you know, if I, if I'm not productive, then I feel, I feel like shit. Like, mm -hmm. you know, sure. it's like, it throws off my whole day if I don't get something accomplished. For sure. Um, and, and it's that, that driven mindset. And also I think the biggest thing for me is like, it's part of my why. It's like I, I have big goals and it sounds like you do too. It's like, 
And if you aren't working towards your goals, then you feel like you're, you're actually going backwards. Right. And, and the biggest thing for me is I've really over the last, since uh, January of 2018, my mindset. So the last like, you know, 19 months now already, uh, from when I graduated in 2012 up until, you know, December 31st, 2017, let's just put it that way. Uh, I was just so much like I thought I had to just work, 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 and I could only succeed in business. And then I realized like this is going to be pointless if I don't have someone to share it with, if I don't have. So like, I became more aware and more focused on like everything that I want in life can come true if I really, you know, you know there's certain sacrifices you're going to have to make here and there, whatever. But and so that that's something, too, that um, this is just touching on, you know, you're saying if you're not being productive each day, because I really struggle with that. But then once I realize it's a whole life thing and you want to move forward in all of life, I want to be able to travel. Like I want to have experiences. I want, ultimately I want to be able to do what I want to do when I want to do it with who I want to do it with. Right. Yeah. So I've been able to do fun things the last like 19 months as well without sacrificing my business, still putting in 65, 75, 95 hours a week but also being able to go to game seven of the NLCS, like able to go to playoff buck games and be able to go to, you know, when the Packers played out in new England last year, be able to go to that with my dad and my girlfriend are taking a trip to Paris for seven or seven or eight days here at the end of the month. And so being able to do that stuff too, but that's stuff that I want to push for. Like I, I view that as growth as well. Um, and I think that's just important that you can have a big thing that people think I think is that you can only have, so much in life. You can only succeed so, you know, in so many areas of life where I'm just very, my mindset's really shifted. You can have everything if you're surrounded by the right people and have the right people in your life. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. That's something I, I, I feel like, um, you know, is, is good to help educate people on because there's so many people are like, well, you know, if you're going to be successful in business, there's no way you can have a, a good working family relationship. It's like, no, mm -hmm. I, I want to have it all. And yeah. I think you can yeah. have it all. And I think you deserve to have it all. Yeah. And, and it's hard. Like it's hard as hell, but like, uh, a lot of it's like in this whole thing with like, I never really was in a relationship before, but, you know, being in a relationship now and like having a girlfriend, like it's a lot of communication and just being able to talk and like being able yeah. to fit anything with my family, like it, just communicate and talk and be able to spend time. And, um, but once again, it has to be the right people though, too. Like there's certain people that, you know, I, I gave up on relationships for a while cause it was just the wrong person. Like, yeah. Right. Um, so anyways, I don't know. I just went off on a tangent a little bit. <laughs> no, I, I completely agree with what you're saying. It's funny. Uh, I had a conversation with uh, Elena Cardone about how, uh, how I thought, and she thought the same way of like, you know, relationships could get in the way of your success. And that was like a limiting belief for me. Um, mm -hmm. And I felt like that was something that I eventually got past and realized was like, oh, my partner, Jeanette, is the best thing that ever happened to me. And mm -hmm. she's allowed me to grow 10 times further than I ever imagined. And, mm -hmm. and so it's like, yeah, your, your relationships, if, you're, if they're good relationships with good people, they yeah. can actually enhance your life and, and help you grow a lot quicker. Yeah, and that's, and that's what I've experienced too, being Jamie, my, my girlfriend. Like, um, I mean, I've been able to do some amazing things that actually I've never, I hadn't accomplished previous that like the type of fundraising that I've done the type of deals that I've structured the size of the deals and so it's you know but then also like if it weren't for her I wouldn't be going to Paris at the end of the month like I just yeah. wouldn't it's something that she wants to do and I'm like I love to travel too like it's no like let's go do it and yeah. so um so it's like a it's I'm, I'm I completely agree with what you're saying yeah um so so what do you tell people like you mentioned athletes sometimes kind of lose their focus or lose their drive because they they don't know where they're headed um, what do you tell to people when, when they're like, Hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm driven. I just don't know where my goals are, or what I should be going after. I guess just try stuff, learn, go out and experiment. Like what do you truly passionate about and go follow that? Um, do the hard things. Cause it's not always easy right up, up front. I think, um, I think the big thing though, too, is patience, right? Because like, yeah. Oh, this all the time is like when you're doing when you're when sports is like you got to be patient because yeah like in the off season you're putting in all this work for you know the fall to then go out and play only 10 games so you got to be patient there but at the same time sports and like working out you're, you're relatively quickly you're getting a result right saturdays you go out and like yep. start, you start and it's there's in college you got 15 minutes on the clock in the first quarter the ball's kicked 14 59 14 58 14 57 right and it's counting down, you got the second quarter, and you got halftime, and you got the third quarter, and then you got the two minute 
morning at the end. And, and it's like, you have three hours and you know the result. You either win or you lose, right? And then it's on next, like the next project, right? For week two. And in business, like it takes a while to play out. Like the things that I was doing in 2009 didn't really pay off until 2013. Like the stuff I was doing in 2014, 15, 16 is just starting to pay me right now. Yeah. The big, big things that I've done over the last, since 2017, they really haven't paid me yet. And I think about that and that's crazy because I'm starting to see the tail end and like some of those big benefits come from the smaller ideals I did and the work that I put in in 14 really pay off now. I'm like, man, what happens in our three or four years when like, like 2017, 2019 started to pay off. Now I'm looking at it, I'm like, holy crap. Like, yes. Yeah. It's going to be wild. It will be uh, as long as we keep putting in the work and things keep going in the right direction. I keep focusing on growth and uh, doing the right things. Like it's going to, it's going to be, I'll be 32 years old and it's going to be crazy. But so going back to your question, I was like, once again, a huge tangent, but going back to your question is I think athletes, a lot of athletes struggle with what you just said is like, how do I find that passion or whatever? Number one, you got to experience, you got to go out and do like, you got to yeah. go after what you want. Don't be scared. Don't get put into this box. Like people told you you couldn't play football or basketball too, right? Well, get you, and you got out of that box and you're able to play at the college level or you know, yeah. whatever. Like get out of that box, break that thinking, go, go out. You don't like go out and do what you want to do. But now once you're doing what you want to do, it's not a three hour game. It's not a one, one year game. It's not a four year game. Like when you're a college athlete, it's, you know, it's freaking like, it's going to take a decade to really yeah. see. It. It's a life game. It is. Yeah, it is. And I think that's a big, that's a big part of it too. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great. And so I just did, just released an episode uh, yesterday about how uh, lessons learned closing 204 units. And I said, number one, above and beyond anything else, patience. You have to have patience For if sure. you want to achieve big For goals sure. because sure. it took us three years to close that deal. And that's just to close on the construction financing just to get dude, it started and a, and a dude playing college football has already been an all American three times. Yeah. And you even really get a project off the ground and start to being built. Yeah. Like, or did you, did you guys complete it? You guys completed it? No, that's just construction financing. Okay. So you like, so you're just like, get, like it took you three years by the time the dude, the dude's sitting here playing football thinking, man, I've been to all American three years. And now you start a project and you like came and break ground on it years now you yeah. got another two years of construction or you know year and a half of construction or whatever and then you got like another year to you know year to get it leased up and you know, yeah, whatever. exactly it's a and so that's such a different it's such a different shift here yeah um, it, it took me a while to learn that because it's like i i want things now and i want and i'm and i'm an achiever and i'm driven and now you know i want to help people but it's like you gotta you gotta lay the groundwork um and the foundation and also know what you want to do and, and be driven on yeah. clarity towards that specific goal, that specific target. Um, yeah. can't get distracted. And, and I think another thing that's a struggle, or I remember it being a struggle for me, the first two falls that I was done playing football was the missing of the team environment. Cause now it's like, now I'm going out and trying to build this business. Yeah. Nobody freaking believed what I was doing, you know? Yeah. My first year out of college, I think I made like 11,000 or 14,000 bucks or something. But once again, going back, I knew like it was going to pay me later. Yeah. And it was like, it's lonely doing this thing at first too sometimes versus, you know, when you're playing sports and I had 90 brothers, you know, like, and you know, there's always people, there are always other guys that believe in the mission that we're doing. When you're starting this thing, man, like sometimes you're all alone and have to believe all alone. So that's a difference. That's a, that's a big uh, transition too. So how do people, how do people like, it sounds like you're very good at, at moving forward all the time. And even when you're moving backwards, you know, you know, if you have a setback, you know that it's actually just learning toward the future. So what, yeah. what would you, what advice would you have for those that are listening that are like, Hey, you know, I'm getting all these setbacks right now. You know, this is really slowing me down. They feel like they just, they can't just win. keep, um, really make sure that you are actually getting out of your comfort zone. Like, are you really getting out of your comfort zone or you're having setbacks? Cause you're not really, you're staying in your comfort zone. Right. Cause I think about like, I think about it like this, the most fun that I have in the most success, I see the most success is when you got this comfort zone, right? and you're standing imagine the circle that's around you. When you step outside that circle, the circle is now behind you. And in order for you to get back in the comfort zone, the only way you should get back in that comfort zone is make that circle grow, outgrow you. Right. And when that circle's growing, 
you're starting to see success. Um, so, the, but the big thing is I think people think they're having setbacks, but really they're not having setbacks. They're just really not pushing themselves far enough, far enough outside their comfort zone. So take a big step outside of that circle, put in the work, uh, and a lot of times it's the most fun work, can be the most challenging, can be the, the hardest, because it's something you've never done before. But as that circle starts to grow towards you again and start to grow past you, that means it's catching up to you. That means you're starting to have success, and that's so much fun. And then what do you have to do again? You got to step outside the comfort zone again, right? Yeah. Otherwise, and so I think, I think, I don't think people really fail as much as they fail or as much as they have setbacks as they do. They just don't step far enough outside their comfort zone and they become complacent or, you know, whatever. And it feels they're not growing, but feels like failure. Yeah. Or they just completely give up. That's really the only way you could fail. But um, I've noticed that is, you know, I've just, I've noticed that. Um, so yeah, I, I see that. I see that as well as like the the times where you feel like you're struggling. I, I think it it takes like going outside of your comfort zone. Exactly what you say. I'm like that's where you learn the most. Um, you know, it's my girlfriend and I moving to Nashville a year ago. It's like that mm-hmm. was getting outside of our comfort zone. It's mm-hmm. new city, new people, new places. Mm-hmm. Have to put ourselves out Can there. Can I do it? Can I do it? And it's really not that scary. Like you're just moving cities, right? Yeah. But it's, right, but it's things like that, like moving or, or, you know, taking it up a notch on the deal size, maybe, um, mm-hmm. or, you know, committing to certain bigger goals. It's yep. that like pushing yourself to be even just a little uncomfortable really just helps well, you grow so much. Well, and what you just said, taking on bigger deals. So this is me stepping outside my comfort zone. Right. And, uh, you start, you know, the biggest deal that I've closed like 6 million bucks or something. And, uh, um, um, and the most amount of units in one deal is like 96 units. So what did I do? You know, about four weeks ago, I went and looked at this $50 million deal. It's 285 units and a new construction. And it's like way outside my comfort zone to try to think of like, you know, $500,000 of earnest money that potentially is, not, yeah. you know, so I'm just like thinking, it's like, you know, for a while, I'm like, man, we're really going to get this deal lined up and going. I think we have like a 1% chance of making it happen still, but uh, small. But, but what it did was it completely like, I believe so much that we were going to get it. And I learned, I learned a lot, but now it's like, now I come down to like this 19 million, 18 million, $19 million deal that I'm looking at. And it's like a no brainer slam dunk. And I'm like, I look at what we have to raise. I look at what we have to do. And it seems easy and tiny coming off the $50 million deal, even though it'll be three times as big. Yeah. What I've done in the past. Right. Um, I don't even remember what your question was, (laughs) but, um, but just do, I think it's still, we're still in the comfort zone thing. Yeah. zone and growing but um and and I think you're exactly right it's like recalibrating your mind and showing yourself like no like these these limits that I put on myself can actually be shifted to be much bigger than I ever realized it's the whole 10x mindset yeah and and like you said you looked at a 55 million dollar deal that made the other deal that's still three times bigger look like nothing Right. And you're like, oh, I can do that. And like, we can do that. Like, oh, we got raised yeah. 4 million bucks. I'm like, oh, that's easy for one deal. Like, oh, that, like compared to like the 14, <laughs> like, you know, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's huge, man. So, so let's go into real estate. So, um, as far as like your first deal, how did you put it together? What did you do? Tell us about it. Uh, the first deal, I mean, it took me number one, it took me a long time to find a broker that wanted to work with me, find a broker that wanted to work with me. And then, uh, you know, I was still learning that whole time. I was still making money, saving money to invest. Um, you know, she showed me deal upon deal upon deal. Finally, I found one. I'm like, oh, this is it. Because now I looked at it enough. I ran enough numbers. I'm like, oh, this is it. Like, I could just feel it. Yeah. So then what happened was we had to, you know, it was a four unit, what, two, 190 to $200,000. Um, needed $40,000 to close it. I had 20. My dad knew and my mom knew that I was a type of person just from, you know, first grade. If they weren't there taking me to football practice, I was walking two miles in the town, my mom would come over the hill, pick me up, drive me the rest of the way. They knew I was, right? So they're usually like, oh, you, you want to do this thing. Like we trust you and working hard towards it. You're always committed. Here's 20,000. They matched it, right? So it's 50, 50. And then um, like, that's the only $20,000 that my mom and dad have had to put in. And that's worth, I mean, it's worth a lot now. It's seven figures. And it's like, um, so it's been a good investment on their part. But that's how I kind of got started. And the whole deal was it was cash flowing. Um, we bought it. So it was cash flowing. And and so this is 2013. Our was cash flowing. The rents were like something just crazy, like $450 a month. 
$500 a month in the area. At the time, they're like 630 to 650. So I'm like, okay, we buy this thing cash flowing. We also had like $10,000 from the bank to start fixing some stuff up. And uh, right away we started raising rents. Well, now every dollar that you raise on the rents, it just drops to the bottom line, right? Essentially, because, you know, we already bought it cash flowing. So I started to see that. And I'm like, oh my God, like if you, if I, you can get some yeah. stuff and start to get bigger and just, it just took time. Right. But, um, so then I, I, you know, about two months into that deal, I, um, you know, the rents were up like $200 a month across all the apartments, whatever. And I started sending out letters to every you know property owner in that town who owned uh, four units or bigger at the time. And six months after I sent those letters out. So, it's, so now it's nine months after the closing of that first building, the guy that owned the four unit right next door reached out, said, Hey, I've owned this building for 20 years. I'm looking to sell it. I just want out and say, Hey, let's meet at the property to look at it. And he took me through. And the last unit he showed me there, he showed me all four units. And the last one he showed me, there was this hoarder. He had no idea about the hoarder and he opened the door and like his face just like, <laughs> he was like, Oh my God. Like, he was like, holy crap. And I said, it's okay. It's okay. And he, I could tell then he was just like, he tapping out. Like he wanted to yeah, like take the property. Out. And so like, but so on the inside, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, buddy. <laughs> and, uh, but then on the outside, I was like, what are you going to do with this? This is like just making it seem like it was really, really bad. Right? I was starting to go negotiate right away. And I'm like, this is, so I can't, like, I don't want it. Like, and I was just like, I don't want it. Yeah. Good luck with this. What are you? And he's like, no, 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 come here. We'll, we'll work it out. We'll make a deal. And so we ended up getting that one for like 180 or something like that. And um, the cool thing about that one though was we put $5,000, $7,000, something like that. And he saw our finance, the rest of the down payment, the bank gave me 80% or whatever. Nice. dollars down in that deal. Um, you know, and then three years after that, it's, then there was rinse and repeat, right? Just fix up the units, da, 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 whatever. Um, pretty much a turnkey property, eight units by that point, you know, two, four units next door to each other. So we were all in, you know, what one, I think it was one, 195, you know, in, in 183 or something like that. Um, so do the math. What is it? 370 we were in, 360, 370 we were in and um, ended up refinancing once. So now we're getting, you know, a thousand dollars a month cash flow from the place, but then we refinanced, we took like 50 out. And then, um, you know, after we refinanced two years later, we sold for 610. So that, and then we 1031 forward into a 10 unit and into a 47 unit and, um, and just kind of kept going from there. And it's, so you're just following the, you know, the, the exponential scaling of those units. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, well, I think about, I, I was just talking to Josh Eastman uh, like a week ago about this was, uh, he's my partner in the storage unit deal that we sold and made a million, over a million bucks. We put no money down, made over a million bucks in 30 months. Um, we were just talking in three years ago, right now I had the eight units. That's it. Wow. Three, three years ago right now. And then, yeah. uh, so October, 2016, we bit off was a big month, bit off 88 units, bit off 64 units, bit off 150 storage units. Um, and then we didn't have any acquisitions again for a little while, got that rock and rolling. And yeah. So you look at what you can accomplish, but once again, though, it's more than just the three years of work because of 2009 to 2013, all I did was learn, make money, save money, look at deals. Yep. 2013, I finally got to pull the trigger. 2014, I pulled the trigger on the next one. Got those things rock and rolling for two years, right? So it's more than just like I, I can sit here and say, yeah, 2006, three years ago, right now, I had eight units. Yeah. But all that other backlog of work, too, right? But at the same time, like, look what, what we've got, like, 10 years. 10 years ago, right now, I was just in that learn, first learning stage, essentially. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so what was it? What, what do you think led to your success over the last three years going from eight units to, to how many units do you have now? Uh, right now we're, we're at 300, uh, we're at the $25 million of assets under management. We're sitting on, we, we just sold off another portfolio. Uh, so we're sitting on some 1031 money. Um, we have a couple, some deals in the pipeline, so we should be around $40 million of assets under management by the end of the year, uh, which, you know, by the end of the year, sitting at 300 apartments now, we'll probably be, you know, 500, 600 apartments by the end of the year, probably. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. So what, what do you think's led to all that? Uh, my whole mindset has just sh shift, like, like, my whole mindset just shifted, like, that you, like, there's abundance everywhere. Yeah. Abundance is infinite. Like, there's no shortage of abundance in that whole mindset. I mean, I picked up Grant Cardone's book, I think, 10X in, like, 2012, and that completely shifted my dad's life. That completely shifted my life. I'd always kind of thought like that, but the way that he puts it in the book, right? It's, um, 
it's just something that I've like, taken. Like that book is, I literally just executed on that book, um, executed the things in that book, um, and then just put myself out there. And I didn't care what people thought, um, just went after it. That's awesome. Hard to say, I don't, I don't have much more words than that. Like it's just been work. It's been, it's been, if I had to sum it up once again, it's learn with the mindset of implementing, find a way to make money. Number two, save the money. Number three, number four, uh, go out and look at deals, whether it's real estate or whether people are just looking at business, whatever, go out and look at deals. And number five is then don't shit your pants and don't be scared to pull the trigger, right? Pull the damn trigger and, um, and then repeat. Right. And so, while you're doing numbers one, two, three, learn, make money, save money, you should be doing number four is looking at deals. Look at business deals, look at real estate deals. Um, another thing people always ask me, and once again, I'm going on a tangent. People always ask me like, oh, what should I do? I got $3,000, I got $5,000, I got $10,000. Like what I did was I, was I was spending it on webinars. I was spending it on, I was getting around people that had, yeah. had cost me money. If it costs me time, like spend your time, spend your resources, spend your money on the books that you can learn how to do it. The seminars, the webinars, um, to get around those people. Um, yeah, I honestly, my girlfriend and I had this conversation this weekend. It's like, we, I mean, we have discretionary income, but guess what we spend it on? It's, it boils down to like three things. It's, uh, education through books and through webinars, through conferences, through coaches, um, and it's exactly what you're saying. It's like surrounding yourself by people that you want to be like, or you want to emulate and people you want to learn from and people you want to do deals from, yep. um, or where, wherever your potential clients are to, as well. Um, yep. getting around the right circles and being able to grow your mind. Cause that is your biggest asset, right? That's that's if you can grow your mind and if you can grow your mindset, then like you said, I mean that, that mindset over the last three years is what completely shifted your business. For sure. For sure, the mindset shift is definitely what, the belief that you can actually go out and do what I'm doing. And not even like, there's people doing bigger and better things than I'm doing, right? And so it's like, it's just, but they have a belief. They believe that they can do it. They're, they have this conviction. And yeah. They have that mindset shift, the perspective. You know, another thing for me is being able to put stuff in perspective is like, as long as I'm healthy, like my family's good, like there's no business failure that's gonna, as long as I have running water and food and like, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. You know, so like for me, I'm not just tied to the dollar either. And people get so tied to the dollar sometimes that then they get scared and I'm not like, I'm just not tied to the dollar. I really like, yeah, I care about money and I need it. But ultimately like I could care less about money. Yeah. Like I get money and I freaking like, I get rid of it really fast so that I can get more money. But once again, more money goes back to talking about before of just being able to do whatever I want to do whenever I want to do it with whoever I want to do it with, wherever it's at in the world and whatever. I want to, I want that freedom. And, um, that that's a big mindset shift too. Yeah. I think you're exactly right. And that goes back to what you said about abundance, like abundance mindset on money and, and cash flow, and, and just money coming back to you. Um, and being able to, you know, it's almost like a vehicle. It's more than anything else. It just carries energy to you and it carries energy out into the world. Like mm -hmm. if you have that mindset of saying, okay, well, money's going to keep flowing to me. Cash flow. Yeah. yeah. And it will, it will happen. And then it, it, it's amazing. It's like you wake up one day, you're like, okay, like really got something going for us. Mm -hmm. um, and it, and it's so true. It's like you, you also committing to that education, committing to that conference, like whatever it is, like Jeanette and I are big on conferences. Like we spend a lot of money on conferences and coaches and all that. And it's like that, those have been the best investments of our life. Yep. You know, it's like, that's what's helped us 10 X our, our success, our, our business, and, our and, life. And the reward that you get for paying a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, or three thousand dollars, or five hundred dollars, like for that education, like even if you learn one thing, you can implement it. Like, yeah. Like I, if I add up, I, I, I should actually do this to figure out how much just in college I spent on books. I think I got most of them off Amazon, but like, uh, or eBay or you know whatever, multiple yeah. different websites back then. But like it, it probably couldn't have been more than ten dollars, fifteen dollars a book. You buy them used, like okay, so I spend, you know what, fifteen hundred bucks on books. Uh, that's paid itself back so many times. Just like like a seminar, a two thousand dollar seminar. Like, yeah. You do one. 
I have a, I have a course and stuff like that. And it's like X price. And it's like, dude, some people complain about it. And I'm like, dude, look at, here's a list of people that this is what they've done within three, five, 10 months after it. Yeah. Like, you just got paid back 30 times what they did. Yeah, exactly. So people, people don't realize that, but it's just the investment and how much it pays off is crazy. Yeah. And I, I think it's that mindset of being committed and, and knowing that it's going to come back to you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, what's, what's next for you, man? What's the, what's the big vision for Justin Spalding? Um, I, you know, just getting back to like, I want to be able to do what I want, when I want, whatever I want to do it. Um, people always ask me how many units you want to get. I just say 50,000. Like I actually have an attachment to that number. Like, no, um, I just want to keep growing. Um, right now, like our management company, by the way, I never had an intention of starting a management company in 2016. You got screwed over by another company and like, screwed <laughs> up. like I'm going to go do it my own. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the whole thing, we're, you know, we're, we're, I'm really putting a lot of resources towards that. Like, I run it on like a 1% margin. This is basically, it's a margin that I like to call as long as I can make payroll or good margin, uh, <laughs> right? I don't care how profitable my property, my property management company is right now because I'm just investing money back into the infrastructure. That's the infrastructure that's going to be able to hold me and maintain and um, uh, force appreciation and just take care of our assets, right? Um, so I'm, you know, I hired a chief operating officer. She previously oversaw like 500 plus million dollars worth of, of real estate for a big company in out of Madison, Wisconsin. And, you know, to be able to have, like, she's a big name, like a lot of people know her. In the area. Yeah. And, um, but it's a big investment. Like I had to cut my salary. Like I had to, so I'm, and I wasn't making that much of a salary. I wasn't paying myself that much on the management company to begin with. Um, so I cut my salary by like yeah. percent uh, wow. to make it work. But, um, so doing stuff like that, right. To be able to grow and get to a point where like, I can't, you know, it can't be just all about me. Like I can't do everything. I need to put people in the, in, in place and pay them well and let them run the show. Right. Um, and let them do what they're good at while I keep going, get deals and go and put deals together and find an investors. So for me, it's just, I mean, keep growth, keep growing, build a, build a machine that can be that infrastructure to hold thousand, five thousand, ten thousand units, keep finding investors, keep doing deals. Um, I never, I have targets and stuff like that but I never like get so attached to them that I'm trying to buy the wrong deal either. Um, yeah. That being said, you know, I kind of make Instagram posts about this all the time. That being said is you can always talk your way out of a deal. Cause you can always, there's, you, there's every single deal you can find why you shouldn't do it. But to me, I want to, you know, I mean, I, I just, I don't know. I don't even know where, I don't know where I'm going with the whole thing, but um, I'm just looking to grow. I'm looking to grow a management company to be that infrastructure. I'm looking to add units. Um, I want to be able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, I think do. that aligns perfectly with, you know, why our monumental listeners are listening today is like, they, they want to use multifamily investing as a vehicle to be able to do whatever they want, whenever they want with whoever yeah. they want. Like yeah. that is yeah. true freedom. And, and should I have more specific like things that I'm putting up to like, I want to be at 10,000 units by 2022. Like, I don't know. Cause to me, it's like, it's worthless if it's the wrong, like if I'm just chasing a number just to chase a number and then it's the wrong. Yeah. Like I want to build it right. I want to build it solid. I want to build it. Um, I want to, I want to get the right assets. I want, you know, but that being said too, I made, I made one mistake A building probably really should have never bought, but we still had over like a 58% cash on cash return, but that's the power of. Wow. That sounds um, like a pretty good mess up like a freaking war zone. That's why I was scared to go to the property. Um, so I'll never do that again, but, um, but how give us like a quick 30 second synopsis. Dude, it was one of the first little bit, it was a 40 unit. One of the first bigger deals and was part of our 64 total units we had over in Milwaukee. And, uh, the 24 unit was in a good spot, good location with the 40 units. Like we had a murder in the parking. We had stabbings. We had robberies. We had the, we had the DEA calling me, uh, saying, hey man, like we either need to get a key for this, and these are undercover guys, we need to either get a key for this apartment or we're gonna be bashing the door down tomorrow morning at 3 a.m. Wow. Here's the key. So like that type of stuff going on. And um, like, so I'll never make that mistake. Even though we made a good return, it's like that no returns are worth that. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> find the right assets and the right <laughs> so. Make sure you have the right criteria in place. And yeah. Stick with yeah. it. 
Yeah. And I mean, it's, you know, it's funny to look back on now, but it's like, I mean, at the same time, it's kind of sad too. I mean, it's just like that whole murder thing. It's just not fun to deal with. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I completely agree. Um, yeah. So real quick, we talked about uh, you doing that Instagram live with Grant Cardone. What was that like? How did that? Yeah. I mean, uh, they, uh, they're awesome people. Um, they're like 100, I get a lot of people ask me about them and stuff like that. Are they real, the real deal? Are they, I think like they are the most genuine people ever. Like they're so genuine. They're the type of people that they're so genuine. It makes people, other people uncomfortable. Um, but I think that, um, they're legit and they're super genuine. Um, uh, Grant and Elena both, I think Elena had actually been following me longer, but they'd both now followed me for like a year and a half, three years, something like that. Uh, cause I started following Grant when he was probably, I don't know, 75,000 people on Instagram was all. So yeah. I, it, it was now he's up like a million and a half or yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. Something. So, um, but, but at the same time, them following me, um, I think they get to see, you know, what I've been doing and I've been consistent and persistent and what I've been doing and you know, all that stuff. And so, um, I think he saw me hop on there. He just like brought me in right away. I was like, Oh, like yeah. I was actually watching TV. And then I was on, looked down, I was like on the screen. I was like, Oh damn. And, uh, <laughs> I just kind of chatted from, yeah. I mean, you know, he usually brings people on his live and I don't, I don't check. I don't see a lot of his lives, but I feel like he usually keeps people on there for like 30 seconds, a minute and a half. And I was on there like, for like four five, six minutes with him. And, and you just, guys were talking multifamily, right? Yeah. We were talking like multifamily and uh, I was talking about how I rent to, you know, where I live and, you know, cause the stuff that he's all about, like I've, the crazy thing about him and his whole mindset is like, he comes out and he's all about all the things that I'm about was thinking and doing all that stuff and operating that way and all that stuff made sense to me in my subconscious mind since like 2012 and 13. So now I got this dude that's just crushing it. Yeah. Social media reconfirming all these things that I'd already been doing, that I'd already believed in, that I already, so that was, that was mind blowing to me, but um, yeah, no, I mean, I don't know him super well personally, either of them, but it was a cool, it was a cool thing. And um and they're they're hundred percent legit. They're awesome. So what? Why I, you have some pretty amazing content all about multifamily investing. Uh, so guys, if if you are on Instagram, make sure to follow Justin Spalding. Uh, we'll put a, a link to it in the show notes. But I'm just curious, what what drives you to to share? What My name's learning? got a U in it. My name's got a U in it, by the way. J U S T I N S P A U L D I N G. <laughs> What, so what was your, what, where else? <laughs> so what, so what, saying? what makes you want to share what uh, you're learning with others? For me. So when I started in 2009, 2012, for me, it was like, I was trying to consume everything that I could to learn. And I'm like, man, I wish there was a dude like, like Grant Cardone and like Justin Spalding then yeah. to learn from. And the cool thing about me too, is I think that being younger, um, you know, Grant's 62 or whatever, and being 29, I think that it, it's kind of cool for me. It's cool. It would've been cool to follow both those people back then to see someone that's not, you know, 62. They look at Grant and they're like, Oh God damn, he's 62 years old. Yeah. Well, but I mean, they, an 18 year old, 19 year old, 20 year old, 22. They're like, that's so far off. I'm never going to be able to do what he does. But then they see someone that's been doing it now, and, you know, in 29. So I just, I, I, I think about that. I think that's cool. I mean, um, I mean, I like, I kind of like the, the engagement and the notoriety on, on Instagram. And I like yeah. that. I mean, I won't lie about it. I like it. It's fun. Um, I just have fun with it. I, I like to teach other people. I like to have the engagement. And I mean, ultimately too, it's growing my business. Like if it was just, if social media was just about like, if I was just on it not to grow my business, I don't think I'd even be on Facebook. To be yeah. honest. Like I wouldn't, I'm, I wouldn't be someone that's on social media, but for me, it's, it's growing my business. I mean, I've found investors through, through it. I've got, yeah. Well, I've found investors to it both directly and indirectly. I mean, I've got people that I've never met. I've, they've never known me other than through Instagram. They're in Minneapolis. They're out West in Portland. You know, they're all over, but they were following me for two years. Oh, I got a deal. They sent me 50 K. They sent me 125 K. Like, yeah, exactly. But then also, so that's kind of indirect, uh, you know, directly, but then also indirectly. What I mean by that, I've raised funds indirectly through social media is the people that already knew me outside of social media my whole life or whatever, they would not have invested with me if I didn't have social media. Cause once again, they saw every single move that I made through social media. Yeah. 
And so um, it's kind of crazy when I think about it that way of how much it actually impacts people that you already know as well, because they actually see what's going on every single day. And then they, when, when something goes wrong on the property, I post about it. I'm transparent. I don't care. Like, yeah, shit. exactly. Yeah. We've got so many broken things in our company right now. It's not even funny. <laughs> the fires that we're trying to set out, not even uh, put out. It's not even funny. But when people see that, they know that you're authentic. They know that, oh, it's real. And um, so that's part of the reason that I do it too. It's kind of all that. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. I think it's like, it's just that, uh, you know, it gives you that thought leadership platform. And, and I love what you said about like, even people that already knew you, you already had an existing relationship. Yeah. But just by posting about what you're doing, people are like, oh, Justin's the multifamily guy. Like he's who mm-hmm. I should give my money to, or he's mm-hmm. who I should partner with or whatever. And then you me, and then you me for like five years before that. Or whatever. Yeah. So uh, but it, but the, the, that platform allowed me to visually like give people, not just me telling them the story one, when I see them once a year or, you know, whatever, once every six months, but them continually, like continuously being able to see it. Yeah. Uh, it's powerful. So let's jump into our monumental questions. Oh what, uh, boy. Six- Drum roll. Drum roll. <laughs> Drum roll, please. So what does, what does success mean to you? Uh, we touched it on already being able to do what you want to do when you want to do it with who you want to do it with. Um, to me, that's, that's success. Uh, but then also, uh, like we kind of talked about before, it's not just about business. Like it's gotta be like me, the most miserable thing ever would be is if I had like 4 billion bucks and all alone, or if I had 4 billion bucks and I'm not healthy or yeah. if I had billion bucks and like, you know what I mean? So like, it's, it's like success to me, being a successful person is more than just, it's everything that you're doing. And um, there's certain parts of your journey along the way for sure, where like you're more focused on business. So other things, you know, it's not, everything's always equal growing this way, right? Business is going to grow. And you know, maybe like your friends suffer for a little bit, but then over time though, you, you have to be able to, you got to be able to um, move forward on all fronts. And that's, I think that's important because it's just, but then at the same time, like if you have, all the health in the world, but you're freaking broke. That's funny either. Yeah. Or if, or if, or if you, you know, you, you have, if you're healthy and you're broke and you have no family, cause now all you do is go to the gym. Cause you're so like, that's stupid. Or if you have, if you have family, but then you have no money, you have no health, like that sucks. Right. So it's, I just truly think that success is being able to do what you want, when you want to do it, with who you want to do it with. And then moving forward on all fronts, not just one, not just, yeah. Two. I love that. So do you have any daily habits or rituals that lead to a good day? You know, I, there was a time, uh, maybe like around 2015, 16, or it's like every morning, get up at five 30, read, I had this ritual. Now it's like, it just depends, man. Like I do, like if my body, I'm, I'm much better at listening to what I, my body needs and what my mind needs. Um, I'm, I, I would have used to be, I used to, would have been guilty about going to a brewer game on a Wednesday afternoon. Like I'll go to a baseball game on a Wednesday afternoon. Now um, I don't, I don't really have any strict rituals other than you know, I'm still hitting 75, 80, 90 hours a week. Yeah. Um, but I'm also listening to my body. And it's like, you know, I work and I'm up, you know, 18, 19 hours a day for eight straight days, nine, eight, eight, nine, 10 straight days. And I need to crash. And it's a Thursday. Like I just go crash on Thursday. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of other rituals though. I mean, I always work out like, but once again, it's kind of all over the map. I fit it in when I can fit it in. Like, so you go five days in a row and sometimes it's at 3 PM. Sometimes it's at 10 PM. Sometimes it's at 4 AM. Sometimes, you know, so I just I fit it all in and I don't have any big time rituals day after day after day anymore. Yeah. Well, I like that you're, you're listening to your body and you're, you're making massive action happen. Yeah. So what, uh, do you have a favorite book or book you're currently reading? Uh, my favorite book, I would say my two favorite books, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I mean, I'll just list, list a couple that have really changed my life. Rich Dad, Poor Dad was big time eye opener to me. Uh, Trump, Art of the Deal. There's stuff out of that book that I use every day. Uh, Trump, Billionaire Lessons. I can't remember the exact name of the book, but it's called, it's something like Trump, Billionaire Lessons for the Small Time Investor. Um, the power of positive thinking by Norman Vincent Dale. Um, and then, uh, think and grow rich. Um, and I know that might be a lot of people if they haven't read that, there's a lot of people out there saying right now, Oh, you can't just even grant and like, you know, all these 
Gary V. Oh, you can't think and grow rich is bullshit. But if you actually yeah. look, you realize that it's like it's the belief and the mindset of oh, I can do that shit. Yeah. But what if you keep reading the book? It's like oh, you got to actually get off your ass and do it. But the first step is like it's been that way for me. Like the first step has been like like my girlfriend. I'm like she she was at the point where like she didn't want anything to do with me. I said I'm gonna marry you one day. And like she was pissed when I said it, but it's like I put it out there and like I truly believed it. And like now yeah. you know that we end up getting together and. But it's the same thing in real estate. Like I go see the deal or whatever. Oh, I'm going to make that happen. And like, it just, so that's that first step of uh, thinking go rich. And I think that book really has changed, you know, what you're putting out into the universe. I really believe in like how you treat other people, all that. It comes back around. Yeah. So if you're envisioning stuff, it's going to come back around. If you're putting the work in behind that vision, it's really going to come back around. Right? Yeah. I'd say those books, uh, those, those probably have been the, the books that, and then 10X, obviously, if I throw 10X up there, um, those six books now are, are the ones that really like 99% of what I'm doing are that, that's learned from those books. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Those are all books. And some of those I even are ones that I consistently give away to people because mm -hmm. like they're just powerful books and they, they yeah. just stretch your mind so much. Yeah, yeah. And, and those are books that I'll read. I'll read like Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Like I'll still read it one time a year sometimes. I don't yeah. get the book or I'll skip around or whatever. But same thing like Trump Art of the Deal. I just love the book. Like I love the story of it. And uh, yeah. You I always, love it. You always pick up a little bit. I always pick like Trump Art of the Deal. I always pick up a yep. little different thing each time because as I'm growing, I'm going through a different season where I – get something that's a little bit more sophisticated or like, Oh shit. Like, you know, and it could just be a four, a string of like four words. I'm like, God damn like that. Yeah. And, uh, so you always learn it from really good books. You're always learning. You can always learn. They, they grow with you. I completely agree. I've reread 10 X multiple times, thinking grow rich multiple times. It's something I try to do like once a year or so. Yeah. Uh, Cause they're powerful. And by the way, by the way, like 10 X, I've never actually read the book. I have the book. I don't know where it is, but I, I've never actually read it. It's always been audible. Yeah. Cause you hear Grant. Love, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love like, dude, it's so to me, like his, yeah. his, uh, him. So like if, if you guys are out there listening, like, and you haven't read the book, number one, just skip the book, get the audio version. Yeah. He does an unreal job in it. And like, don't be a little bitch. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He adds in little things. Chapter six. Fun. Right. So like, like he does an awesome job there. And, uh, and if you, you know, if you have read the book, like I still suggest throwing that thing on audible and like when you're driving, like, yeah, I love it, man. Well, in closing, how can people follow you or reach out to you? Instagram is at, uh, Justin Spaulding, J U S T I N S P A U L D I N G. Um, I've been doing TikTok a lot lately too, which is freaking crazy. I have no clue what I'm doing on there, but not for like <laughs> like 16 posts on there but i got like four posts that have over 100,000 views or something. i don't know that's posts. hilarious i'm gonna have to yeah. find you on tiktok yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't even have a tiktok but i'm gonna start one now so it's, so it's justin uh, on tiktok is justin j-u-s-t-i-n and it's a period and then my last name spalding s-p-a-u-l-d-i-n-g and then i mean i'm on facebook uh linkedin is actually probably my next uh, linkedin i'm pretty I, I stay pretty uh i write articles and stuff on there um so i'd say those are the those are the ones that's great, man. Well, guys, if you found value in today's episode, make sure to reach out to Justin. Uh, follow him on Instagram. Honestly, that's how we connected. He's yeah. got massive value over there. Um, and Justin, I had a blast having you on today. Same, man. I appreciate it, Evan. This is uh, this is fun. I like doing these podcasts, and this was this was a good this was a good one. So. Yeah, yeah. We may have to have you back on at some point. Let's do it, man. Six months from now, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Let's do it. All right, guys. So if you enjoyed the episode, make sure to reach out to Justin, share the episode, tag both of us on Instagram, wherever you're listening. And guys, have a monumental day. 